In today's cellular trail camera marketplace, it's pretty normal to see GPS being advertised, but it comes with a catch. Much like every other specification, a lot of these trail camera companies are really kind of stretching the truth on what specific models and cameras actually have. And let's face it, today, most people are worried about theft. And when they see those GPS capabilities, it gets them excited, but there's slim chance you're going to track down a stolen camera kick in somebody's door, beat their ass, and take the camera back. You know, I think that we've all seen that keyboard warrior on some Facebook group or some forum saying, you know, that's what's going to happen. But the reality of it is it's it's just not. But all that aside, GPS capabilities and cellular trail cameras can still offer some advantages. Um, there are some disadvantages. So in this video, we're going to go in take a full scope look at GPS, what GPS is, how it works, and how it relates to cellular trail cameras. GPS is simply an acronym for Global Positioning System, which is owned and operated, maintained by the US government. It consists of three basic segments, the control segment, uh, the space segment, and the user segment. The space segment basically consists of 24 to 31 satellites that orbit the Earth at uh, a little over 12,000 miles above the Earth's surface. And at any given point on the Earth's surface or given point in time, uh, at least four satellites can be reached by um, a device that has GPS capabilities. The control segment consists of 29 global ground facilities, and these ground facilities, uh, their basic job is to communicate with the satellites, send it commands, and then log the data or the, the data transmissions that happen from a GPS device to these satellites. The user segment is a little harder to define, but in general terms, um, it consists of any device that has GPS capabilities. So it's owned, maintained, operated by companies who put GPS capabilities into their devices. So in our case, we're talking about cellular wireless trail cameras. Obviously, GPS and cellular trail cameras have a lot of advantages, but it's just not the stolen camera factor. I mean, that's what everyone thinks about. Um, that's the gem. But when people are thinking about this, they often fail to think about the next step. Yes, your camera got stolen, it has GPS, but how does it actually work? How, when, and where are you monitoring the camera's location? That's something to think about. Um, are there any possibilities or scenarios where the GPS function you know, is not working? Does it need to be turned on physically through a setting? How does it, um, does it run automatically? How does it affect the overall battery, batteries in that trail camera, the battery life of the of the trail camera. So these are all specific questions that, you know, if you're looking at a, a cellular trail camera with GPS capabilities, these are questions you should be asking the company that's marketing this product. And we, you know, in this video, we don't have that specific answer. It can be different for every single camera, every single use case, uh, every single company that you're looking at. But it's important to note those questions because, you know, just thinking, hey, I got a stolen camera, I should be able to track it down and, and get it back. Well, again, that's that may not be the may not be the bottom line. So think about those questions when you're looking at um, cellular trail cameras with marketed uh, GPS capabilities. One of the other advantages, and I think you know some of these are actually more advantageous than being able to track down a stolen camera, but one of them is having a automatically populated info or time strip, um, you know, on your photos and videos. So with a GPS, if it's truly GPS. Um, is integrated into the camera's hardware, your northing and easting coordinates for that camera's location should be populated on that timestamp. And to take that a next step further on your camera's, you know, camera location on your mapping tool, your mapping app, your mapping software, whether that's uh, within your camera's uh, mobile app or within, you know, a third party uh, mapping application, you should be able to, you know, use those coordinates or Again, maybe it's auto-populated, but that pin, that camera should show up on your mapping software without ever doing anything. Um, all this stuff should be really automated with that GPS pinging every so often, depending on you know the scenario and the use case of that specific camera. But it takes a lot of added work away from, from the end user. So with those you know advantages, you need to look at some disadvantages as well. And you know the obvious ones are you know battery life or signal failure. Um, Sometimes GPS can be inaccurate, and we say inaccurate, uh, you know, you're within, you know, 30, 50 feet. It's not um, super, super precise, but generally speaking, it's going to be pretty accurate. Um, privacy issues. 
So in commercial explo exploitation, and I think the privacy issues and the, ex the uh, commercial exploitation or the selling of data are probably the two biggest things you need to worry about. So be cautious of, you know, the terms of service or the user agreement. Um, if you have a camera and how that data is used on the back end, make sure you guys are protected um, in that sense. So now I want to talk about, you know, the catch with the marketing term GPS and how camera companies are using them. Any cellular device or a device that has an IP address technically can be located through triangulation, whether that's, you know, using cell towers, using satellites, whatever the case may be. And this is where, you know, oftentimes trail camera companies are using or marketing GPS capabilities because technically they're not, they're not really lying. You can triangulate and find that camera's location or that device location within maybe a city block, but it's not, you know, it's not the GPS functions or capabilities that you as a consumer, as the end user are familiar with. When you hear GPS, you're thinking of, you know, um, your phone or you're thinking of OnX or some um, navigation tool or navigation app on your phone where you're doing, you know, very specific, um, you know, step-by-step -step navigation instructions, you know, driving your car or on X, um, you know, scouting or being in the woods. And a lot like all the other specifications in the trail camera marketplace, you know, these companies are kind of, well, they are not kind of, they are stretching the truth of what they really have. So the bottom line is, um, you know, just make sure you guys are doing your homework. Make sure that before you purchase, if GPS really is the a deciding factor in what cellular trail camera you want, make sure you guys are talking to the company. Make sure you guys are asking these questions and make sure you guys fully understand whether or not that camera has true GPS capabilities, but then also how it's implied through the mobile app or the software that you're using that camera with. So uh, we hope you guys get something out of this. You know, we do all this to educate folks. So we appreciate the time. We appreciate the support. If you guys would leave a comment below, if you have any questions, any comments on this video, and be sure to smash that subscribe button for us.